got the mainline core here in browning. It needs to be sanded. So I've got the sanding block. It's a long sanding block because a long block will make the sanding go smoother. No lumps and hollows, at least hopefully. This is 60 grit sanding paper here. To make the uh, seams more visible, I used a Sharpie pen before I put the cork on to highlight the corners. It makes a great guide for laying your track later on. It's a good idea to make sure you've got the right size rail before you go installing it. I like to solder two three-foot pieces of microengineering flex track together to make a six-foot piece. I snip off the last tie to make room for the rail joiners. Then I use a small file to remove any burrs that might be present. The burrs have to come off for the rail joiners to slide on. I always use microengineering rail joiners with microengineering rail. Microengineering rail has got a smaller cross section than other products. After sliding on the rail joiners, I pull out the soldering iron and solder the two pieces together. Microengineering flex track can be a little difficult to line up in a curve. It doesn't want to bend easily, but this tool makes life a lot easier. I'll show you how it works. Well, we start off by holding the track sort of in position. Then I put this on. It slips on the rails, and I'm putting a gradual curving pressure on it. Don't want to, don't want to work all at once. I'm kind of coaxing it into position. See how easily this is going? Just a little bit at a time. Easy does it. One of the things that happens though is that the ties tend to slide around and they're not perfectly aligned anymore. So I'll need to take care of that. I need to tweak those back into shape in a little while. Very difficult to get into precise shape at this point. So all we're trying to do is rough shape it. Now we're getting close now. Look at that. It's almost flowing around this curve. Before I had this little tool here, the shaping business was a lot more painstaking a lot more attention. Well we're gonna have to trim the track down here where it hits this turnout so let's get it ready. Well you can see here that the ends of the flex track and the turnout don't line up particularly well. First thing we have to do is take some ties off. Then I'm gonna line the track up here. I'm gonna sight down it. Where should we cut it? Well, let's cut it right at the end of this piece of turnout rail here. Now, when I cut it, I'm going to take a little more off than I really want to. So I'm going to mark it. So I pulled it this way. I'm going to mark it by just denting it with the edge of the rail nippers. And we can get in here. Well, after we snip the track, you can see the burr that's left here. We're going to have to file that off. And we got to do some deburring. And let's take some burrs off the end of this one too. Well, let's see if we can uh, get this to fit here. Hopefully it'll just slip on real nice. Yeah, that's good. 
So I'm going to mark here. I'm using this green pencil. Usually you'll use a red pencil, but I can't seem to find it, so green is it. This is how far I'm going to be spreading the glue. I don't want to get glue in here. So do that. And there's a couple more places I need to mark. I'm going to put feeder wires underneath these rail joiners. I'll bring them up and we're going to solder them right to the bottoms of the rail joiners. That way they won't be visible. But I need to know where the holes are going. I'll mark where the rail joiners are on both sides. You can sort of see those marks here. But well, that'll be good enough. Finally, we're going to mark here at the end of the flex track. And this is how far we need to spread the caulk. Make the feeder wires long enough to reach the bus underneath, but not too long. I use red and black wire. I'm going to strip about half an inch off the ends of the wires. I'm going to leave the wires poking up a little bit here. I'll make it easy to remember where they go, and also I'm not so likely to get glue on the uh, business ends. When I go to spread caulk, I use this tool. The notches on it leave little ridges of caulk behind. Sort of like the notch trowels that a tile layer or a, a linoleum layer uses. This is what I use to put down the caulk. Caulk is just a tube of uh, latex paintable caulking. I'm just running a bead of caulk down the center of the cork. Don't forget to plug up the end of the tube of caulk again or it'll be solid when you come back for it. Now we're going to spread the caulk out. I've got my little tool here. tricky around the wires. Don't want to get any caulk in there. Judging from the buildup here, I'd say I put too much down. So where I got too much caulk on spread over the edges, gonna try to take that off with this knife here. If you do get too much, it'll start squirting up between the ties. It'll just make a mess. We're going to bend the tops of the feeders. They're going to come up underneath the rail and we're going to solder them to the bottom of the of the uh, rail joiners. Let's pull them down right now so that they're in position. Oh, okay, let's put that rail in place. We've got the flex track here. I'm going to sit it on and uh, slip it into the joiners down here at the turnout. The feeder wires are here underneath that joint, and uh, well, there it is. I was looking for my uh, track alignment tool again. I'm going to use that to push the track into position a little here, and also to bed it down in the in the caulking compound. You can see here that. When we moved the track, we wound up with a bunch of ties that got jammed up next to each other. We don't want that. So I'm just going to take these tweezers here. I got the, the wrong end of them. And I'm just running them down the ties here. And that just gently moves those ties around. there. 
and I think we got the tie spacing restored here. One of the things that I found is that if you want the track to be straight, you've got to use a straight edge to do it. If you don't use the straight edge, it's not going to be straight. Sight along it here and that's looking pretty good. For the curves, I'm going to use my track alignment tool some more. And it's difficult to tell just by looking at it whether it's really curved or not, but I can feel it. I put this on and I apply slight twist, twisting pressure to it. And I can feel where the curve isn't continuous. So it's a combination of looking and feeling. Looks like I could feel there's a lump there. Get that out. I'm trying to be careful to keep my fingers out of the caulking compound too. I either twist this way or twist this way to try to get the track to be a little more curved or a little less curved. Let's double check the straight piece down here. Is it still straight? And the answer is no. It, uh, it moved a little bit. Don't want that. So let's move it back again. I think this is about done. So we got one more thing to do. Kind of weight it in place. Well, actually, there's a little more than one thing to do. So we still got to solder those feeders in place. That's what I call the canned goods express. So we'll let this set for a long time, several hours at least, and overnight is better. And then we'll come back and we'll pull the cans off and put the feeder wires on. Well, I pulled the canned goods off the track and I'm going to solder the feeders on. First step, of course, is to tin the feeder wires. They're not going to solder very well unless they're tinned. I'll try to leave a little extra solder on them. Now, I'm going to push up underneath the track, pushing up on the wire. Okay, I made a little kink in the solder end that'll help get the solder up underneath the rail joiner. I like doing it this way because it hides the joint. And we pull down on the wire. Okay, that's nice and strong. Let's try to get some solder underneath there too. Pull down. That's good and strong. Okay, those, those feeder wires are soldered now. Well, that concludes my little tutorial on how I lay microengineering flex track. I hope you found it useful. Bye now.